Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. We have an amazing show for everybody today. Crystal, you're at home. Uh, you're not feeling so well. Out of abundance of caution, we're going to make sure yes. that you're all right. You want to tell the folks, give them an ap- update? Yeah, so over the holiday weekend, I tested positive for the old coronavirus. Big Finally came nine. for me. This is my that's my first bout with it. Um, I mean, I'm t- I'm fine. I feel probably like I'm going to say 92 percent better. Um, and according to what the doctors are saying, uh, you know, I shouldn't be contagious anymore and any of that stuff. But I just wanted to be super safe and not infect anybody. So doing the show remotely today, but I am well on the path to recovery. Um, and we do have a great show for you today. We've got uh, some new dire warnings about uh, the economy actually might already be in recession. So we will break all of that down for you. Um, we're also going to bring you the latest details on that horrific mass shooting in Highland Park, Illinois, a suburb outside of Chicago. Um, they, they have arrested uh, what they describe as a person of interest. So we've got all those details for you. We also have some pretty stunning polling on how the public feels both about Biden and about Trump. The two dudes who are most likely to be the major party nominees that basically no one wants them to be. So um, we'll break that down for you. Big developments on Ukraine. Um, How will uh, the public respond? How is the administration responding? New questions there about whether we've been fed an overly rosy picture of what is going on on the ground. And some new questions about Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre and how she is performing in the job. Also a reminder of our big live show in Atlanta. There it is. Atlanta, September 16th. We're coming, folks. Uh, we've done a phenomenal job of selling tickets so well. Uh, they tell me that we're blowing expectations out of the water, which is exactly what we want. Just as a reminder, we are coming not just to Atlanta, but all over. But we have to show that we can sell tickets in Atlanta before we can book venues anywhere else across the country. So it's going to be fun. It's a big midterm show. We're going to have special guests and all that stuff. We're already planning the production. So if you can go ahead and buy tickets, means the world to us, uh, to the show, and just shows the industry we are viable. We are as big as we think we are. So hopefully we can show that to everyone. So let's start then with the economy. Let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. What do we got here? Which is that the Atlanta Fed, and this is very interesting, the GDP tracker that they use in order to forecast whether the U.S. is in recession or not actually shows that the U.S. is likely in a recession right now. The GDP gauge says that the second quarter is running at a negative 2.1%. And if you couple that with the first quarter decline at 1.6%, that actually does fit the technical definition of a recession. So let's also throw the next one up there on the screen, please, because that's really what factored into the decision-making, which is that the 1.6% decline in the start to the year really did show you that it was uh, on pace in order to show 1.8% instead of the 3.1% that was estimated in May. You couple this all this together and you just see the economy is getting slammed. The reason that the meat there is the first sign is that food inflation, gas inflation, cost of living inflation, rent inflation, and more are just smacking consumers all at left, right, and center. And all of that is impacting the ability of the average consumer crystal in order to go out and spend money, which is seven. of the entire U.S. economy. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I mean, you already have a majority of Americans saying they think we are in a recession or headed to a recession. Now we are seeing some numbers to back that up. You also see economic confidence. Let's put the next element up on the screen. Um, The lowest since 2009. Um, It's plunged to minus 58. As of June, 85% of Americans say the economy is getting worse. And yet, Sagar, let's put this next piece up. Mm -hmm. It's a very strange recession because people are getting hit hard. Uh, You know, their wages are not coming anywhere close to keeping up with inflation. So that means they're basically getting a pay cut every period. Um, Growth is negative. So that is the technical definition of uh, recession. And yet the unemployment rate continues to be quite low. So they say in this piece from the Wall Street Journal, if the U.S. is in a recession, it's a very strange one. (laughs) Analysts sometimes talk about jobless recoveries after past recessions in which economic output rose, but employers kept shedding workers. Well, the first half of 2022 was the mirror image, a job full downturn in which output fell and companies kept hiring. Whether it will spiral into a fuller and deeper recession isn't known, though a growing number of economists believe that it will. I mean, I think it's very unlikely that you move forward into full-on recession and don't see uh, the unemployment rate go up significantly. But even with the rate where it is, there's still such a large amount of pain growing, especially for working class people, 
because their wages just aren't going far. So out coming out of COVID, you just have such a strange um, con- confluence of events and circumstances with the supply chain shocks now with the war in Ukraine that it is creating economic conditions which are almost unprecedented and very hard to predict where this ultimately goes. Yeah, no, I think that's the right way. You know, and I actually, I get annoyed by the technical quibbling by the economists on whether we're technically in a recession or not. It's like, look, shit is too expensive. It's simple. You know, everybody feels that cost of living is too expensive. That's why consumer sentiment, as we showed, is all the way down to February of 2009. Whether we were tracked by 1.2 versus 1.8, the basic fact is, is that cost of living is way too high for one 100% of Americans. And if you consider that in the context of wages, yeah, okay, you know, r- r- you could have the unemployment rate at 3.6. As long as wages are only rising by 2% and cost of living is going up by some measures around 10 to 15. If you look at some of the really tough areas of life we've talked about before, you know, that car segment we did on how the average payment was 650. Well, now it's over 700, actually. So wow. it jumped up $50 Jeez. once more in the last month. Supply chain shortage is wrecking everything from what people need in their most basic. So whether we're technically retracting, not retracting, unemployment rate, things are too expensive. And I think from that perspective, nobody can argue that the economy is, what does Biden say, the strongest since World War II. It's like, yeah, well, wage growth then was actually pretty (laughs) high. So, you know. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and I mean, one thing I really worry about that we talked about before is, you know, one of the big hopeful things this year, one of the only big hopeful things this year has been the energy and the labor movement, which really came directly was enabled by the fact that number one, you have an NLRB that is actually, you know, taking the side of not even taking the side of workers, but, you know, doing their job effectively. But the big reason is that you have these labor market conditions where jobs are plentiful, even if they are not good jobs. So if you see uh, the economy start to turn so that not only are your wages getting undercut by inflation, but you also have, you know, fewer and fewer jobs and people more desperate just to hold on to any job that they can possibly get, that is going to cut the knees right out of the burgeoning labor movement. One of the things that they pointed to in that uh, Wall Street Journal piece, which was very interesting about, you know, it's a very weird recession, is part of what's going on with the negative, negative growth is retailers are having a lot of trouble figuring out um, their inventory needs. So you had, you know, this supply chain issues, which continue, by the way, but some of some of which have gotten worked out a little bit, some of which have been exacerbated by the the war in Ukraine. But they uh, built up a lot of stock to get ahead of the fact that, okay, we've got all these disruptions, we've got to get enough in into uh, our warehouses. And now they're caught kind of like holding the bag with too much inventory. So rather than building more inventory, they're spending, they're selling that off and, you know, trying to, trying to get that off their shelves. And so that's part of what's contributing to this uh, negative growth and why you have such a kind of, you know, weird situation unfolding with the economy is we are still trying to figure out how to get things back to any semblance of smooth operation post-COVID and post all the supply shocks um, that have to do with that. And look, it's a long-term question, too, of how much uh, how much sustainability versus fragility we want to have in the supply chain. I hope that moving forward, the government puts policies in place to encourage more resilience. But, um, you know, don't hold your breath on that one. Yeah, I'm not going to hold my breath. Uh, I, unfortunately, I the, all the signs that we're seeing, the Fed continues to hike rates. That's less investment that companies can make into their, you know, into both in capital expenditure, workforce. They're going to have to cut costs in order to keep their share price medium, at least in the long term, or try to deliver back dividends and more. At the same time, the supply chain issues are nowhere close to getting resolved. Target and all of these other retailers that are dealing with inventory, their response is not to deal with or rent more warehouse space, which is also, by the way, sky high right now. Their Mm -hmm. response is to slash and burn and to try and sell as much of it as humanly possible. So we're actually learning, in my opinion, some of the worst lessons from a lot of the supply chain crisis just because of the financialization in the economy. And I think all of it is just going to contribute to everything being more expensive. Gas is going to be expensive for the foreseeable future. I just don't think that there's a way around it. I don't think the food prices or any of that is going to come down, not just because of Ukraine, but because of so many fertilizer that we've talked about, LNG shortages. So all, all of the shortages, nitrogen and inputs into the food and gas supply chain, the basics of life, unless we see a legitimate New Deal-style effort, which you and I know is not coming, then, well, 
It's like things are just going to be expensive basically from here on out. And I think that's very unfortunate. Let me say one thing about that, because um, this was also interesting to me. There was another article uh, about how a lot of commodity prices are actually coming down. Uh, Wheat, corn, oil, and they didn't attribute it uh, in this piece I was reading. It was another Wall Street Journal piece to, you know, oh, changes in supply and demand. And, oh, we now have, you know, better supply here, less demand there. It was all because Wall Street speculators had decided to make different decisions. Which I think, you know, it's also important to remember that these prices don't just reflect the basics of where supply and demand intersect as we're taught in Econ 101. A lot of this, and you see this very clearly in the oil price in particular, the gas price that you're paying at the pump versus what the price of a barrel of oil is. A lot of this is also driven by Wall Street speculators and the bets that they're making irrespective of what else is going on in the real economy. So um, there was some hopefulness in that article that because commodity prices were coming down, maybe inflation has reached its peak. Maybe it's going to go in the other direction. But I think we're a long way from all of these things settling out. I think that's right. Because even as you're describing, you know, a $15 drop, part of the problem with inflation is expectations. So part of the reason that prices are staying high is people are like, oh, well, expectations are chaos. And so we're going to keep the price high just in case going forward. I wish it fluctuated, like you said, with pure supply and demand. But that's not how things work in the U.S. of A right now. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.